What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Bundesliga career mode. It is episode number five. We are returning today with a brand new season as our second year at the Rhine Energy Stadion gets underway with a transfer budget of... 18 million, which is about what I was expecting. Um, basically the same as last year. We, of course, did leave a little bit of money in the budget last season, but the reason why it's not all carried over is because towards the end of last season, I did decide to bolster uh, our scouting team. Not our youth scouting team, but our transfer network scouting team to make it better for the new season now that the transfer ban has been lifted. So 18 mil, yeah, that's, that's I'd say, both realistic uh, and also... Good. I mean, I, you know, I'll take that. Yeah, what I didn't want was like a budget of like 50 million pounds. Um, uh, let me sort this out first. Hold on. <laughs> you know what I'm like, man? I've got, I've got to sort this out first and then we'll uh, they'll all run through the squad together. Yep, as four of our players have now left on both free transfers and in the case of Killian and Huber, uh, transfer fees. That will raise our budget up to around 25 million around that. 26 mil. Okay, so that's fair enough. Uh, after those sales have now been completed. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's about realistic. That twenty five mil in total after two sales. That is about realistic, I would say, uh, for this FC Cone team. What I didn't want was like an astronomical transfer budget for the new season. Uh, you know, or, or even just a big transfer budget of like forty, fifty million pounds. I like the fact that right now we're improving the team gradually, realistically, but also as well giving chances to those young players as well. So that now leaves our squad. A little lighter, a little thinner, but again, it's not a big deal as we're not playing in Europe uh, this season. And of course, there's only one domestic cup in Germany as well. So yeah, uh, oh, by the way, and Justin Dial has had his contract extended, by the way. I did this towards the end of last season. I know you guys would have killed me had I not re-extended his contract, or extended his contract, I should say. I know he's got decent potential somewhere in the low to mid-80s. So um, yeah, I had to do this, even though I didn't play him much last year, because I know I would have been massacred in the comments had I not done this. Yeah, heading into the new season, as we will take a look at the team, I'm going to add Cobbing to the transfer list straight away. Now that we've got a young lad, oh, this is a, well, we did briefly touch on this lad last season. 20 years old, 74 rated goalkeeper with balanced GK stats all across the board. Colin Academy graduate, was out on loan at uh, Firth last year. He's going to be behind Schwabe, who was joint best in clean sheets last season. So again, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to try and loan him out once again. What's his contract like? 4.3k? That's not bad for a 20-year-old. Uh, I'll take that a month. But uh, yeah, I'm going to try and loan him out. And um, we've already got a third choice here, or a second choice, I should say, regardless. But uh, I think Graffi will get a new contract as well. Uh, are we going to see a potential upgrade or downgrade for anyone? No, DJ remains a potential to special. That's fantastic. Uh, Eric Martel, he's 22 now, so we can't shoot a potential. Anyway, I'll give Linton a new contract in a moment as well. And uh, we'd also want to see if Simons has had... Yes, come on, I was just thinking a potential upgrade. I just thought he might get one because of the fact he was top in assists last year, winning the assist title at just 17 years old. I did think there might be a potential upgrade for Mad Max. He's got one and he joins DJ with a potential to be special, but we don't know as Justin looks as though he's lost his potential, so that being the case, he needs to get some game time. He's going to try and load him out. Um, Benjamin still has the potential to be special as well. That means all three of our youth stars have all got the highest potential tags possible. That is absolutely fantastic news and a great way to start season two. As Damian Downs has now got showing great potential since returning from loan as well. So yeah, loads of players with the deals that come the end of the year. Uh, just looking down the list now, um, I'm, I'm definitely going to give contracts to Fink Graffe, to Miner, and also probably Hussein Basic, the young Bosnian that I quite like as well. Uh, the others, however, I'm not too sure. I'll have to think about it. So yeah, and even Florian Kynes, the captain, I might let him go on a free transfer at the end of this season. But uh, yeah, definitely free contracts. Fink Graffe, Miner, and Hussein Basic as well. But for the others... I'm not sure. I might I might possibly let them all go on freeze. So just looking at the team right now, as for where we'll improve in this summer window with that transfer ban now being lifted, um, definitely no doubt about it. We discussed this at the end of last season. We need a right back, definitely. Last year, Pacarada filled in there all year long, but he did a good job, don't get me wrong, as an inverted fullback, but we, we want a proper right back for this season. So I'm a little bit younger as well as he's 29 now, and maybe a new CB too. We've got Bakatakanda back from his loan spell. We're going to try and loan him out again. Soldo's going to get sold. 
uh, in this summer. And outside of that, there's no one there. We've got no defenders in the resis whatsoever. So, yeah, definitely that's going to be our main area to look at this season. Selka was fantastic last year. I don't have any problems with him leading our line for a second straight year. But a new right back is my number one target. And also hopefully a new CB. I would just start alongside DJ or to be our third choice. And speaking of centre half, well, here is the Youth Academy. And like I did say last season, what we were going to do for the new year is promote Ronnie Hahn, the best of the bunch in the academy right now. 16 years old, 67 overall, but 90 to 94 potential. We know he's going to have that potential to be special. And what we're going to do, promote him and loan him straight out. I don't want to gamble on him for another year, keep him in there, and at the end of the season, ask for a contract and lose his potential. So, with that being the case, potential to be special, get him the pro deal and get him loaned out as soon as possible. This guy needs the first team football to continue his awesome development. Oh, no. Oh no, I didn't even I didn't even realise. Um Well he's not do you know this is interesting, he's not he's not come to me and said he does want to leave. Hoff and I was putting a bit of four point eight five mil. It's just a bit for one of our uh, our young academy grads, but I'd rather loan him out. Uh, I didn't even realise Selga had that low release clause there. Our top scorer last season, I'd, I'd rather not sell him. You know, if he came to me and said, Boss, you know, sometimes a, a player will come to you when their release clause is met and said, Boss just want to let you know I'm going to leave and I'm going to join this club. Then I'd let him go because he's not asked to leave. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say no, Dave. You're staying with me, bro. Like if if you know, I'll advance one day in the calendar, but if he doesn't say anything, I'm keeping him with me. I'm not. I'm, no, he's not. He's not said anything, so he's okay to sit down and negotiate a contract with me. In that case, Davey... <laughs> Davey, you're not, you're not going, if, if I can give you a contract extension, you're staying here, mate. You're too good to leave. Yeah, I say this quite often, but if a player says to me, oh, you know, just, just had my release clause met, going to meet with this club and, and end up joining them, then I'm totally fine letting that transfer go through. But if they don't say anything, then I'm happy to extend if I think they're good enough. And Davey definitely is. Little pay increase to show our gratitude for last season's performance. We would not have finished top 10 without Davey Selka, our top scorer, man. He scored, I think, half of our goals last year. We can't afford to lose him, man. Too good. Hey, love that. Hi, boss. Good to see you. Just wanted to say this. Great for my confidence. Know you still value what I can bring to the team. How could I not value it, Davey? How, 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 how could I not value it? Man, without you, we would have finished possibly bottom three last season, certainly bottom five. So the Blades uh, want to take Ronnie on loan. I love that. Chris Wilder will beef him up there in the championship on a two-year loan. Uh, Cobbing is wanted, and we'll accept that deal right off the bat. And also Hussein Basic, yeah, just, just gave him a contract, so it wouldn't be realistic to sell. Travis on support also want Ronnie Hahn, so we'll accept that as well, as another bid comes in for... Uh, a very, very lowly rated goalkeeper, Cobbing, as well. And we shall see if that goes through. And uh, FSC Mainz won Justin Deal on loan. Now, this is quite an interesting one. Mainz only just finished the bottom three last year. Would he start there? I'm not sure personally, but I am thinking about bringing in one of their forwards for this season. So, actually, what I'm going to do is say, okay, you can take him on a. Yeah, okay, we'll dedicate the one year loan. But. Um, yeah, I'm fine with that. But I might do a little switchy-switchy here. Let him go to Mainz and bring in one of their forwards. Montpellier want him as well. Uh, I'd, rather, to honest, I'd rather keep him in Germany. Um, so I can keep an eye on him closely. As I'll do that in just a second. But uh, also, Olsen is wanted by Etifak. And I'm totally fine letting him go there to play under Steven Gerrard. Is, is Gerrard still in charge of Al Etifak? I'm not too sure. But uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's negotiate both these deals for Ronnie Hahn. And uh, yeah, we'll let him choose whether he wants to go to Bramwell Lane or off to Turkey. And Darmstadt now want to take Baku to Kanda. Love that. Just relegated last season. So that will be a perfect destination for him to spend a year. And Orbuz uh, is wanted by Valladolid. Totally fine with that as well. Um, still, still weighing up my options for new signings. But I don't know if you guys are the same as me. But I like to, as we see our third choice goalkeeper leave there on a nominal transfer, I like, I like to sort my own house, get my own house in order first before I look to make new signings, you know. I like to sell my players, load my players out, and then I go for new signings. Unless it's someone I desperately want to bring in as soon as possible and I'm worried about them being poached by another club. First order of business, get your own house in order. Just before uh, we move on to other things, uh, Coventry want to take back into Kanda. I'd rather get him to, uh, to a two-league side, though, to be honest. Uh, Justin Deal 
Uh, Mites have agreed to one year loan, so we'll quickly negotiate a split, which is always 60-40. I really hope in the future EA vary this up. It's not it's not that important, obviously, when it comes down to, to salaries, uh, especially for players at this level, but it would be nice for a little bit of variety. And also, LAFC want to take Nicola Soldo to uh, America. Totally fine with that. So still lots to do before we make new signings, but I'm not I'm not rushing things here. We've got a little bit of money, but the most important thing, like I said, is just cl clear out the players we're not too keen on long term and then assess the situation after that. So there we go. A few more quick departures as we see our Armenian striker go to Cardiff. Uh, Ronnie Hahn has indeed gone to join Sheffield United on a two-year loan deal. Perfect place for him to go there, Bramwell Lane. Uh, under Chris Wilder and also two quick sales Marvin Obuz has gone to Real Valladolid and uh, Olsen has gone to Al Etifak to join up with Steven Gerrard as well there is a bid for deal from Whitecaps Vancouver but obviously we're uh, going to turn that one down we're not going to sell him we do want to loan him and we're still waiting for the Baku to Kanda deal and the Soldo deals to go through and as soon as they do as soon as they do uh, I'll, uh, I'll then start to make the new signs our, our squad is getting thinner but like I said, it's yeah, it's it's okay because we are going to make new signings directly afterwards. So it seems as though we're clearing out the entire house and we'll have nothing left. It would be like Will Smith at the end of Fresh Prince of Bel Air. But don't worry, as soon as, soon as we've got these sorted, we'll uh, we'll start bringing in new recruits. Hey, and there we go. So uh, yeah, Justin has gone to FSU Mites on a two-year loan deal. So we'll keep an eye on him there with the uh, bottom half Bundesliga side. Uh, we also see that Soldo has joined FC Copenhagen. So totally fine with that. Get a little bit of money as he's off to Scandinavia. And also as well, back to Kanda has joined relegated Darmstadt as well on a one-year loan deal as he will try and help them bounce back. So there we go. All the transfers and the loans completed in terms of departures, which leads our squad looking I mean incredibly thin you know it's thin when you've got two goalkeepers on the bench <laughs> um, but like I said don't panic because we will have some money on the back of all those sales there and the original budget we started off with is 30 it's not a lot but it's enough to reinvest and start bringing in some quality to the first team and also squad depth as well. Let's go shopping. Like I said, right back was going to be my number one target. My scout's been getting me a few targets to look at. The one that I was very excited about was this guy, Saïl Kambedi. Don't think I've used him before. French talent right now playing for Olympic Lyonnais. Um, shows the great potential tag as well. Put him on the shortlist, but there's another player as well that I've been looking at from Denmark, Elias Jeller. They are both the same overall, but Kambedi is a couple ratings lower. Um, I don't think I've used either before. I've certainly not used this guy before, but I love the fact this guy's got 88 stamina, right back, left back, list of positions. And I'm not sure whether Kambedi would leave at such a young age, but for Jeller, moving on from Denmark to uh, the Bundesliga, they cost about the same amount of money. I'm, I'm kind of sold on Jaleer at the moment just because of that stamina as well as the pace as well. This is the guy to go on for. Ne never used him before. Excited to try him for the first time. Let's bring him in. Yeah, I think I might have used Kambedi before. I believe he's a, uh, a pretty decent young French ride by that grows quite nicely as well. But I've certainly never used this guy before. So it'll be nice to give him a go for the first time ever. Um, yeah, it looks pretty solid from the preliminary stats. And if we can get... Copenhagen down to around six and a quarter million. Come on, we gave you Soldo, so you give us your learn. There we go. Six and a quarter million for the young Danish international. Never used him before, but excited to finally get a first choice right back. Possibly could have got him a little bit cheaper, but I don't mind one bit because it's our first signing with FC Köln since the transfer ban has been lifted. And on a five-year, 15 grand a week contract, I finally got my first choice right back. For season two onwards, he'll be wearing number two. Welcome to the Rhine Energy Stadion, Elias Giller. Yeah, never used this guy before, but I, I do like the stats. I must say he's got a great deal of pace about him already. The 88 stamina is really what drew me to him as well. And technically, he looks really solid when going forward with some good defensive stats at base as well. And at 21 years old, he's only going to get better. So we'll get a high defensive work rate as soon as possible, improve those defensive stats, and hopefully try and get the strength up, even though it's got a hold on attribute. That's the only concern for me, really. He's not as strong defensively, but hopefully, fingers crossed over time, he'll mu get much better in that department. And just before I forget as well, the Euros have now been completed. Oh, I'm so excited, man. I literally can't wait. Southside in the beer garden. 
watching the Euros. I'm, I, mate, I'm so excited for the summer. I'm sick of the wet weather we've had in England for so long now. And speaking of England, European champions, first time ever. Harry Kane's curse is over. He leaves them to the Euros with a win over France in the final. Yeah, for those who might not live in England, we have had like the wettest weather. Honestly, I can never remember. I, I don't remember ever being as wet as we've experienced so far. So uh, I, I did say I wanted a, uh, a new centre half for the new year. And I know there are a few Colin Academy grads that have left and I'd love to bring back. None better than this guy, Jan. Well, I suppose Florian Verzo. No, he wasn't a Colin Academy grad, but he was like Jan or El Bissek. I think right now into Milan, that's just not realistic. But even though he just got promoted last year, uh, Bright, Ari and B is that a contract coming? the end of the season so he helped guide him to the top tier but not committing there at Hanover I wouldn't mind bringing this guy in I think I have used him before I'm not too sure but as a third choice to sit on the bench for DJ and Chabot I think he's absolutely perfect out of contract coming the end of the season available on a cheap undervaluation deal let's bring him in a 2.5 million pound deal agreed with Hanover a 15 grand a week five year contract agreed with Bright and I did not know this but he played for Khan on loan couple of years ago they never featured for the team before moving on to Hanover and before that Bayern Munich and before that he was in England he grew up in Bedford I had no idea he even represented one of England's youth team I had no idea about that very interesting career path for him and now he's back at Con, but he'll certainly get some game time under me no doubt about it it's a stop gap for Ronnie Hahn until he returns Bright does return and welcome back to the Rhine Energy Stadion Mr. Ari and B shows great potential 21 years old so still getting better and I love how quick he is as well that is so important for us as we do play that high defensive line 81 on strength so physically really solid and defensively really good too can fill in at left back but to me definitely a center half that would excel playing in a high line very very happy with this signing here welcome back to Kong all right here we go now it's starting to take shape now it's starting to take shape he's not he's not going to start in this team ahead of DJ or Chabot um, again, he, he could play left back, but to me, he's, he's, he's much better just as a natural CB. Um, what, what are we lacking now, then? What are we lacking now? Definitely not forwards, that's for sure. But probably, again, I, I still think we could probably do with another centre-half or another fullback. really. I don't think we're done in that department yet, despite the two new signings. Um, no plans to sell anyone from here. I'd like to get Urbig out on loan, though. That's the thing. Um, he's not going to play ahead of Schwabe, and he, he needs to game time. So what I might do is offer him a, a long-term contract and then say, right, we're going we're gonna to loan you out, get you that more first-team football like you had last year at Firth, and um, yeah, tie him up long-term, but let him go short-term. So let's give him a contract extension and uh, a wage increase to keep him happy as well. He, he's, a, he's definitely my long-term number one. So I'm going to reward him early and say I'll give you a 10 grand a week contract. Big pay increase because I see you being my starting goalkeeper once Huawei starts to show signs of decline at some point. Let's put him on the loan list and get him out. You know, I like to bring in those players from relegated teams. I, I really want Barrero Martins. Mine stayed up last year, only just, but... I'm not sure about bringing him in for this season. Maybe maybe next season. I think he's joined Benfica in real life, but uh, not, not for this season, I think. But from relegated teams, Leonard Maloney, German-born American international. I think this guy, to me... I, I know, uh, you, you know what I'm going to say. He could easily be a ball playing defender. 90 stamina, 84 strength, 76 jumping, 84 aggression. Okay, let's be honest here. As a ball winning midfielder, that would be his best role. But I think his secondary role could easily be as a centre half. Six foot two, medium high work rate. So now a contract coming at the end of the year from a relegated Heidenheim side. I'm bringing him in. Yeah, we can get him under the market valuation. They want Lim Perle. Uh, but I'm going to say no, we're going to get him and play hardball for exactly what we just quoted, 2.4 mil. And that's what Heidenheim would agree to as well. You know, I like signing those players from relegated teams, especially in the early seasons of an RTG. This fits us like a glove. For 2.5 mil and on a five year, 15 grand a week deal. I'm not sure what this guy's ceiling is, but at least for the first couple of years, he'll certainly have a role to play in our squad from a relegated Heidenheim side. Now coming in to join Damien Downs as a dual national between Germany and America. Welcome to the Rhine Energy Stadion. Leonard Maloney, 24 years old and yeah, I don't know what this guy's ceiling is. I've got to be honest here, you know, approaching his mid-20s in the early 70s for rating. Probably not much. I'd imagine maybe like 77, 78 potential, but I, I think looking at these stats here, 
in EAFC, basically any ball winning midfielder that's got a bit of height can easily be converted to a CB quickly and will probably have an overall spike. And to me, a CB is our lightest area in terms of depth. I think that's the best decision, at least in the short term. So we're converting to CB and I think we are going to see an overall spike by about two ratings as well. As Ferrell Pisalo want to take Lenny Viva on loan. Totally fine with that. It's a young 18-year-old with a low starting overall, so it needs the game time. And he'd certainly get that there in the Serie B. Going to try and loan out. Wow, that's quick. That's one of the quickest negotiations I think I've ever seen there for a for a player going out on loan. That was the, the day after, man. They're really keen on this guy. I really want to loan out our backup goalkeeper, man. That's the key here. Uh, I've, all, I've all the young players we got, and there's a lot of them. He's the one I really want to get out on loan and get first team football. Is he going to start there at Molyneux? I'm not too sure, you know. And I know it doesn't really matter, but it's just, you know, I, I, I do like to send players out on loan where I believe they will get uh, first team football. Is Jose Sar still in goal for them? Is he still there? Yeah, he's still there. There's, there's four keepers there, and granted, Jose Sar is head and shoulders above the rest, but. I, 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 want, I, want, I want preferably I'd like to keep him in Germany and if not then just just somewhere I know he's uh, he's certainly gonna get the first team football and again I, I know it doesn't matter in the AFC career but I get it but it is just nice for the realism I mean starting at Juve I don't think that's gonna happen either to be honest I do believe this guy would start in the Serie B Lenny Viber is off to Ferrell Pisalo should, should start there I would at least hope anyway um, and an academy update as well so five players in the youth team now. I'm not. I'm not sure about the Dutch goalkeeper. I, I know I always like one goalkeeper in the academy, but I think we can do better than that. Especially because for the new season, we're going to now start to send our scouts out for the upcoming year. As Cohen Backer looks the best here, and I, I am going to specify a goalkeeper. I, I want a, a youth academy goalkeeper if possible. So three scouts. Oh, that's a youth academy. Three scouts, and as always, we'll keep one in the nation we're managing in. Uh, again, I don't, I don't normally ever specify a type or a position, but uh, in this, in this case, I think I am going to specify a goalkeeper. I, I want to find a, a goalkeeper from Germany uh, for the, uh, for the, for the youth academy. And if we want to stay reasonably close to home, I guess we could look at Switzerland and France as well, possibly going up towards Scandinavia as well. Uh, although I, 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 I think let's, let's, let's go, let's go France. And, uh, and Switzerland first. So we'll send this guy out to Switzerland for nine months. Should we specify a type? Specify a type? Maybe like a, uh, a technically gifted Swiss player, maybe? I don't know. I quite like the idea of that. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's, I, I, I rarely ever specify types. So let's do it this year. We'll look for a technically gifted Swiss player. And we'll look for a, uh, a physically strong French lad as well. So yeah, I, I basically never ever specify types. When I get asked why, you know, Doxy Boy, why do you never look for a you know physically strong player or a uh, technically gifted player or a playmaker or whatever? I just find better um, returns where you just specify any. But in this regard, we'll vary it up. Let's look for a physically strong French lad and a uh, technically gifted uh, Swiss player as well. Who's Oscar? Just been approached by Udinese. He's got two years left on this deal. I'd love to bring this guy back, you know. FC Köln Academy grad. Would he come back this year or would he rather go with Udinese? Udinese aren't a European side, are they? No, just looked it up. Last year finished mid-table in the Serie A. Oh, can I bring him back this year? I didn't plan on doing it this year, but I don't want him to go to the Serie A if I could possibly convince him to return. Can I bring him back? Oh, I'm going to... Say, yeah, I think, I think you know what? If he's considering going to Udinese, why not consider a return to come? We're on the rise. We proved that last season. Salah, time to return, mate. You were born in Cologne. Time for your homecoming. Wait, was it this year? Is that a contract? Or the end of next season? I think it might have been the end of this season, actually. Let's go £12 million. Pounds. That's under the market valuation, but that's the rest of our money gone on one player. And I plan to sign at least one or two more. Um... Let's go, let's, let's hardball Dortmund here. 12 million pounds, and they say, yeah. It's going to be all of our money spent, but I, I really wanted to bring this guy back. I'm doing it a season earlier than planned. Born in the German city of Köln itself, he is a local lad despite representing Turkey on the international stage. Moved on to Borussia Dortmund a couple of years ago, but never really progressed his game there at the Signal Iduna Park and just became a bit part player. On the brink of leading to Udinese, we said Salah, how about homecoming instead? And he says yes, he agrees. A slight wage cut to return home for the promise of more first team football back at the Rhine Energy Stadion. 
I'll be honest here, a year earlier than I planned, but I couldn't afford to let him go elsewhere. Yet, welcome back to Cologne. Salah Ozcan. Yeah, great, great stats on a guy here. CDM is his natural position. I, I think definitely there's no doubt about it. He could be converted to a ball playing defender at six foot, but I'm going to leave him as CDM as his natural position. I don't think he's going to get much better now, but to me, even if he just hits 80 overall and that's his ceiling, that's more than good enough to be a starter in this team for this year, possibly next year, and maybe even the year after that as well. He's only 26. He's got a long way to go before he starts to show signs of decline. Welcome back to the Ryan Energy Stadium. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start him alongside Eric Martel. Um, can I... Uh no, no, just do, do a couple more there. No, no, one, one more. There we go. Uh, and uh, what I'll do is I will now start Simons in that playmaker role, even though he's naturally become slightly better as a CM as opposed to a CDM, uh, a, a CAM, sorry. But what we can now do is reconvert him to CAM. And you might think, well, you wasted a year's worth of uh, development, you know, phasing him deeper. But no, I mean, he's got potential to be special and he won the assist title last year. So obviously not. It would just take him a few weeks to become, well, two weeks to become an official CA. And, and then we can start his development from there. So, yeah, Maxime is now going to get phased further forward after playing deeper last year. Ozcan and Martel will now give him more freedom to be more effective on the offensive end. And I must say, I'm liking the team. I'm, I'm, I'm liking how the team is looking now. Again, there's very little depth to it, but it's not a massive deal as we're not playing any European games and there's only one cup competition in Germany as well. Um, only problem is, we're now out of money. So this is the problem with a small transfer budget. As to the challenge, which makes it really fun, but you got to spend your pennies wisely. And I don't think we did that with Oscan, if I'm being honest. I think hometown hero kind of bias kind of uh, <laughs> kind of shone through there. Two mil. We, we might be able to make maybe one signing or maybe, maybe, maybe one more on a free agent. But other than that, yeah, that's, that's, that's probably done for signings now. As uh, Maloney is going to become an official CB. I just want to see, is he going to have an overall spike? Oh, yes, he is indeed. Up three to 76 overall. That's good enough to be a starter in this team. And Lazio now want Jonas Urbig, but I don't think he's going to start there. I don't, I don't think he's going to start there. I know, again, I know it doesn't really matter, but to me, I just like it for the realism. But, um, okay, so we can actually probably put Maloney on the bench and have Arian B now as a uh, fourth choice CB. They can also fill in at left back or possibly DM if required. Okay, I'm liking this, man. I'm liking this. We're starting to progress a little bit naturally and a little bit better. And yeah, I, th I think one more signing that will probably do us for this year. And there's another offer comes in for Hussein Basic, which of course will turn down as so we've just given him a contract. Now it's Newcastle United that want to take a big on loan. Um, no, like what, where, where are the, you know, where are the firths? You know, where, where are the clubs... That uh, were relegated last season. Your Darmstadt, for example. Roma? I, listen, this is a really good young goalkeeper. I love the idea of maybe him being thrown in there. But I don't think he would be. Based on rating alone. So, come on guys, man. Seriously, where, where are those deals? I, I was hoping to send this guy to Heidenheim. Get, get, maybe Galatasaray. Is Muslera still there? Yeah, is Muslera still there? I know he's not 50. But I don't think he's that far off. No, Muslera's gone. Muslera has retired. So that means that they are needing a... Fir okay, there we go. I'm, I'm fine doing that. I don't mind that at all. I actually think that fits quite well there. Muslera is now a goalkeeping coach at Galatasaray after all the years of service. I, I much prefer that one than, you know, Newcastle United, for example. I think he'll start there in Turkey. To be fair, even Frankfurt. Although then again, Kevin Trapp. Would he start over Trapp? Probably not. So ho hopefully, fingers crossed, I can get that turkey deal to come through. Tiggers is uh, wanted by Norwich as well as Braga online, but I ain't got him on the loan list. So uh, yeah, f f fingers crossed, I can complete that Galatasaray deal because that that actually will be a perfect, perfect move for all parties there. And as Max is now going to become an official CAM, uh, doesn't have an overall spike, that's fine. But uh, yeah, so the, we just flip the positions back to front once again. I want to get a high attacking work rate as soon as possible. And uh, can you get it with attacking, which one's quicker? Yeah, attacking midfielder. Um, 
But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna loan out Urbig. We'll play the first game of the season over Freiburg, and then we'll leave it there. So yes, get in. We're gonna loan this guy's guy to run again. That that fits perfectly, man. Absolutely perfect fit. And again, I I know in Kruma, as I said before, it really does not matter whether the player plays or not. It doesn't affect growth at all. But to me, it's just nice. It's nicer than sending him to Juventus, for example, where realistically, it, it'd never get a game. And there we go. Jonas Urbig finally, after all the speculation, has left on loan. And he's taken the number one jersey at Galatasaray as well. So surely, surely he'll be starting there. And that's much more preferable than him sitting on the bench in Turin, for example. So as the season ticket money comes in, we don't get much, but our budget is now up to just shy of £5 million. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll play the first game of the season over to Freiburg. We'll crack straight on with this. And then we'll look to possibly reinvest in the next episode a couple weeks to go before, or a week to go, I should say, before the transfer window opens. Our objective this season, by the way, qualify for a European competition. Very strong objective domestically, indeed, after last year finishing a ninth. But possible, definitely possible, but we'll need to get off to a much better start than we did last year, especially at home. Our first game is indeed Freiburg at home. Let's start off with a win here at the Ryan Energy Stadion. Come on, Colour. I remember last season we didn't win a single game at home until match day 17 uh, against a, uh, a relegated side in the end, Heidenheim. And I thought we were like cursed at uh, Kung. And then eventually we turned it round. It was the opposite. We started winning consistently at home. Hopefully this year we get off to a better start and continue it. There's Linton and there's the great start we were looking for. Yeah, it, it took him, I think, 30 game weeks until he got a goal last season. This year, no such problem starting off. A goal on the opening day, eight minutes in. And not a goal for Davy, but an assist as Linton opens the scoring. What's Cam? Oh, why to Tillman? Can we find a, uh, a dagger in what has been otherwise an awful game? That sums the game up, man. Absolutely awful, this. No quality whatsoever. Other than the one moment that saw us open the scoring. That's a great ball by Oscan, though. Finger Affe onside. Pegs it back and there's no one there. This has been absolutely... Oh my goodness. If there is... <laughs> if there is ever a goal that sums the game up, it is that one. Messier on his debut has just dropped a bit of a clang for Freiburg. And Davy Selka, our top scorer last year, has scored the easiest goal of his career. Dear oh dear. And then the celebration kind of summed it up as well. He just tripped over the Frenchman. That'll do it though. It's going to be on the opening day. And Selka marks his extension, as does Linton, both of them, with goals on match day one. Terrible game this, but we'll take the win. A game of basically no real quality in it, but I don't mind too much. Can't come through with the 2-0 victory. And whilst it's a stark reminder, we've still got a long way to go before we become the team we want to be in terms of our performances. Results like this will get us to where we need to get to. So, bigger picture. It's a perfect way to start the season off. So, that will do it for today's episode of the Bundesliga career, my guys. So, we'll be thankful for you have enjoyed it. And if you have enjoyed today's episode, then please do drop a like. So, you all have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode. We'll return with the second episode of Season 2. With just under 5 mil in the budget and a week to go before the transfer window shuts. But, possibly some big moves about to occur as well. More on that in the next one as we look to make some more transfers with this current side. Have a great day, guys. Much love. And I'll see you for the next episode very soon.